In this video, I have a World War II era cavalry tunic. Now, whilst it is from World War II, from the 1940s, its origins and its fashion date back to the 18th century. The reason it's in such a state of disrepair is the trooper who wore it likely wore it often. Now, this was not a tunic that was worn in battle or on the field. Back in World War II, they actually had much different uniforms. He wore it throughout his life for different dress ceremonies, and it's been through a lot. This is a piece of history, so it has a lot of stories to tell. Some of the stories I'm not even aware of, but his character is seen all throughout the tunic. You can see where he tried to fix it himself and where there were different mishaps throughout and how it was decorated by the missing pieces. I've recorded all of the work, so join me now and see what was involved. The immediately obvious problem is its tattered piping, which is all around the uniform. The piping's coming tremendously undone in some areas. I'll have to address that carefully. Also, it's missing buttons on the outside. There are several moth holes, missing hoops and eyes, and that's just the exterior. The inside needs even more specialized attention. When you reverse the sleeves, it is lined with silk that is rotting. On the inside near the back, it is severely tattered as well, with what we call several areas of loss that need to be contained and repaired. Now, the reason it is in my care, I've volunteered to restore it for the armory where it comes from. Naturally, both cavalry history and military history mean a great deal to me, so I wanted to help. Now, to cover a bit of what I'm actually doing repair-wise, I'm starting by tidying up the threads. Now, this tunic belonged to a trooper, Harrison. He was a trumpeter for the 1st Troop Philadelphia City Cavalry. All right! All right! March! They were the first cavalry unit formed in defense of the new states in 1774, serving under Washington throughout. This makes them the longest serving cavalry unit in the United States. They still exist today. The uniforms these troopers were wearing in 1774 and throughout the American Revolution were not this fancy. In fact, in our American War for Independence, they dressed a little bit more traditional with brown uniforms with cream or white facings. Now this tunic belongs to the first troop in Philadelphia. They've served in every major war involving the United States. Even though they use tanks in modern warfare, they still ride horses for ceremonial purposes. This makes them the longest serving cavalry unit in the United States to date. They just went from being mounted soldiers to armored cav, like the rest of the army, which of course was a transition that took place in the 20th century. Now, as this is a museum piece, the point is not to make it wearable again. It's to make it fit for a mannequin and stop the threads from coming undone ever again. That includes tightening up the piping. And I'm reinforcing it with a polyester thread. The trooper this belonged to has since passed on, graduated to horseman's heaven we call it. The goal is to make this last and prevent any further damages, while also honoring this gentleman's memory, which is easy to do because the trooper this was made for was apparently quite the character, and his personality is all throughout this tunic. It can be seen in the way he tried to fix it himself 
There are mismatched buttons here. See just how different that button is from the rest. You've got a couple here that are like that. And I could swap those buttons out to make them match the rest, but it's part of his character. I'm just gonna leave it. As the story goes, the design behind these tunics and the uniforms that troopers wear comes not from an American design necessarily, but from a French model. Now this isn't too surprising, since we know how Europeans dressed in the cavalry was famously elaborate, with many buttons and far more piping than what this uniform has, but for America it's actually quite unique. The story goes, as this troop was serving in 1774, onward into 1776, they served under probably the most famous of Frenchmen to help our war effort, the Marquis de Lafayette. Lafayette came back rather famously in 1824. And when he did, of course, he stopped off in Philadelphia. He did a tour around all of the states. And of course, that included of its richest cities, Philadelphia, where this troop originated. Well, naturally, the troopers put on their best and met the Frenchmen outside in a parade, greeting them on top of their horses with a salute, etc. Let me get my buttons. And apparently, and apparently, Joubert Lafayette, he saw that they were still wearing their military uniforms from the war. Wow. Lafayette at this point has been witness to many a battle in France. God knows his country went through a lot while he was growing up. Between the French Revolution and the Napoleonic Wars, he'd been exposed not only through his own military means, but through everything he saw. He'd been exposed to uniforms that looked quite a bit better than what, <laughs> what the troopers were still wearing, which was their traditional brown jackets with cream or white facings. Well, apparently Lafayette exclaimed, my boys are still wearing rags. Can't have that. So, the story is, so he wanted all new designs for his men to be a little bit more befitting their role as one of the richest city's cavalrymen. And he designs and apparently finances all new uniforms to be a little bit more befitting uh, European standards. On top of this, they were also issued new helmets, which were equally elaborate, topped with bearskin. So this is a uniform that deserves to be repaired. So they ride their horses in ceremonial parades throughout the city to commemorate their first commander-in-chief. So they will ride each year to commemorate Washington's birthday and all related holidays. So Trooper Harrison served in World War II. Now, of course, at this time, we have much different uniforms that the troopers are wearing. And since this tunic is his dress uniform, he didn't go into battle in it. He would have worn this tunic for parties or ceremonies that the troop was putting on and riding horses. So he would have worn this tunic on these horse parades and whilst bugling.
whilst trumpeters are not needed anymore in modern warfare for ceremonial purposes and when the troopers ride in dress, of course the trumpeter is there. And the trumpeter will be there to play his music at each of these Washington ceremonies. And finally, the finished result. After replacing the missing buttons, I fixed so many moth holes in total. And of course, tidied up the piping as I went. Piping in the front was coming loose, so I tightened it up, especially around the buttons. Towards the bottom, it was coming undone completely, and I managed to replicate the pattern when sewing it back on. You can see Harrison's buttons. This should prevent it from coming undone. And these are all spots I reinforced with thread. From front to back, this was done. Because Harrison did as much repair work as he did, I didn't have to do as much as I normally would have. For instance, you can see where he sewed the buttons on the back himself, which indicate they had been ripped off previously by a belt, which the troopers often wear. Even though much of this piping is stained, probably from champagne, I did manage to at least secure it onto the sleeves. The neck collar was in rough shape as well. I couldn't replace or sew on its piping because of the thick material, so I trimmed what was left for a neater look, something that will make it last longer. And on the inside I sewed fabric over the original material, which should keep it perfectly secure for use on a mannequin from here on out, while also maintaining the integrity of the tunic. You can see where his Baltric box belt over his shoulder likely ripped off his shoulder, causing this tear. So all I did was reinforce his handiwork for the shoulder tear. Another moth hole I attached. And last but not least, a light steaming brought the wrinkles out, at least as best it could. So overall, it was amazing to find out about this troop and the trooper himself. It was highly rewarding to see the handiwork produce a beautiful outcome. And it pleases me greatly to know that this tunic will continue on. 
in some better shape than it was before. And I will be taking it to its military museum home in Philadelphia. Next.